Hey everyone, welcome back. We are doing a disk method video here, uh, integrating in calculus. If you haven't checked out our videos with area between curves and area by slicing, make sure you do that. Uh, but here we're going to talk about disk method and building solids of revolution. So the idea is I've got some region under a curve. So if I call my curve uh, f of x, some function, and I'll call the space below it the region, I'll just call it r for region. Uh, what we're going to do is actually take the region r uh, between the function and the axis and we are going to revolve it about an axis so we get a solid uh, based on where we're revolving it. This one I'm going to actually revolve around the x-axis so if you can imagine grabbing the x-axis with your fingers and sort of twisting it uh, so that we get that region revolving around the x-axis then we get a nice solid with rotational symmetry. And if I cut through that object, you'll see in any location I would get a disk. I would get a circle uh, because it has that rotational symmetry, that spin to it. So this um, handle to a drawer or whatever this button is or something that we have here, this uh, solid of revolution, um, is basically if we slice anywhere, we get a bunch of disks. And so we, what we want to do to build the volume is to add up all the areas of those disks to arrive at our volume of this solid object. What we will think of doing is taking some sort of vertical rectangle here like we would have with area, and we're going to revolve each rectangle in our region about the axis, and that will become one of our disks in this solid over here. Um, so we'll be slicing through. Each of our areas will be a, a disk, so the formula for the area of a circle, which would be pi r squared, pi times the radius squared. Um, and each radius, if you can tell looking back and forth here, each radius is just going to be the length of this rectangle. So the length of the rectangle would be from the axis to f of x, in other words, f of x minus 0, which is the axis. So the area of each disk is simply going to be pi times the function value squared. And then we will sum up an infinite number of those disks from x equals a to x equals b. Uh, so very similar to our volumes by slicing. We'll be going volume from a to b, our area formula, which is pi times the function value squared dx. And that will give us volume by disk method. Let's go ahead and take a look at another example. And we'll look at this one here that I've built. So I have um, my region R is defined and bounded by y equals 0, x equals 0, so the axes, and in the first quadrant y equals the square root of 4 minus x. If we revolve that about the x-axis, so same idea, spinning it the same way this time, then we're going to get an object that looks similar to this. So maybe it's the, you know, the a, a rounded front of a crayon, or it's the the front of a rocket, or something. So we get this kind of uh, objects that we want to find the volume. And again, if we slice through it, we're going to notice that every slice, because we rotated, revolved about the axis, then we have a disk for every slice. So what we'll need to do is simply figure this out using that the volume is going to equal the integral from a to b pi times the radius squared and again our radius is the function value so f of x squared dx okay we'll go ahead and bump the pi out so in this instance when we're doing disk method and we draw our rectangle through the region Again, we're going to want to always draw our rectangle uh, perpendicular to the axis of revolution. We always want to draw that. So this distance here will be with disk method from f of x down to 0 because our axis of revolution is 0. So we will be doing pi integral from a to b. So I'll need my bounds. This point here, since it's the y-axis, is going to be at x equals 0. If I try to figure out where it hits the axis here, 
In other words, when y is 0, y would be 0 when the inside of the root is 0. And this is actually at x equals 4. You can probably tell by what you would plug in to get 0 inside of the root. So we're going to integrate here from 0 to 4. And we are going to take our function and square it. So we're actually going to do the square root of 4 minus x squared dx. Okay, so in that case, it's just going to get rid of the square root for us, right? The square, so we'll have pi integral from 0 to 4. We'll just have 4 minus x dx, and then we'll go ahead and complete the integral here. So for this one, this is just power rule, nothing difficult here. So when we integrate, we'll get pi times 4x minus power goes up by 1, divide by the new power, so x squared here over 2, and we will plug in our bounds 0 and 4, top first minus bottom, so here we would do pi times, plugging in 4, 4 times 4 would give us 16, minus 4 squared would give us 16, divided by 2 would give us 8, and in this instance, when we plug in 0 in each term, we'll get 0 for each term there. So we'll get 0 minus 0. And then doing the subtract, we will get 16 minus 8 times the pi out front. We'll get 8 pi. And because this is volume, we will say that this is units cubed. Okay, so that is taking that region and revolving it about the x-axis to generate a solid. What I also want to do now is to take that region and revolve it about the y-axis and see what happens. So I have the same region R here. Revolving it about the y-axis would generate this type of a solid, a little bit different because we're spinning it a different way, right? So the rotational symmetry makes the solid object look a bit different. All right, so doing the volume, remember that volume is going to equal pi integral from a to b. Now here's the thing, if I draw my rectangle perpendicular to the axis of revolution, then that means my rectangle in this instance is coming off of the y-axis instead of the x-axis. Remember with disk method you always want your rectangle running perpendicular to the axis of revolution. So we have the rectangle going this way. When our rectangle runs horizontally, remember that means we're going to be integrating dy. Okay, so these will need to be y bounds and my function will need to be in terms of y. So we'll have pi times the integral f of y squared dy. So I need to go ahead and get a function in terms of y. I have a formula in terms of x from before, but I need a function in terms of y. So if we go ahead and look at y equals the square root of 4 minus x, and we want to solve this for x, so we'll get a formula in terms of y. I'll go ahead and square both sides. I would get y squared equals 4 minus x, and then doing a minor amount of gymnastics, move the x to the other side, move the y squared to the other side, that would become x equals 4 minus y squared. So that is our formula for the distance of our rectangle. And we'll go ahead and form our volume equation now. So we have volume equals pi integral from a to b. Let's come back and get those in a minute. So I know that my function value function is 4 minus y squared. I'm integrating that squared dy. And then I need to go back and look at my bounds. So I need to figure out if these are y bounds, the lowest point, which would be y equals 0, and then the highest point. So the question is, where does this original thing, or where does this thing, hit the y-axis? What's its intercept? Well, that would be when x is 0, wouldn't it? So if I plug 0 into this original, I would get y equals the square root of 4 minus 0, which is the square root of 4. So this would actually be a value of 2. You could also go ahead and plug in here and figure out when is x 0. 
when y is 2 or negative 2, but we're looking in first quadrant, so definitely positive 2 in this case is where we want to be. Okay, so we're going to integrate from 0 to 2. Now I have 4 minus y squared quantity squared, so we're going to need 2. Um, if we're not sure how to do that in our head, which is totally fine, then maybe you want to write out two copies so you can see a little bit better to distribute before you do the rest of this. Okay, so we'll get pi integral 0 to 2. This will be, if we distribute everything, we'll get 16 minus, I'll get a 4y squared and another 4y squared, so that's minus 8y squared plus y to the fourth dy. Again, everything is still power rule here, so nothing too terrible to deal with, uh, but a little bit more than the last one. I wanted to choose one that I could do both directions. So here, um, actually, let's just go ahead and do the integral. So we'll get um, 16y. We'll get y cubed over 3, so that'll become 8 thirds y cubed, and then we'll get y to the 5 over 5, so that will become a 1 fifth y to the fifth from 0 to 2, and then we will go ahead and plug in our bounds, plug in 2 first, so we will get, uh, let's see, 16 times 2 would be 32 minus, so let's see, 2 cubed would be 8 times another 8, that's 64 on top and still a 3 on the bottom. 2 to the fifth power would be 32, so we'll get 32 over 5. And then think about what happens. If I plug in 0 into each of these terms where y is, I'm just going to get 0. So we're really just left with this. Um, if we want to do this by hand, I guess we would need to get a nice little common denominator of 15. So here I'll multiply by 15. We'll say 480. Here we'll multiply by 5, we'll say 320 plus, multiply by 3 here to get 15 on the bottom, that'll be 96. All of that over 15. And then if we do 480 minus 320 is 160 plus 96, that looks like it's going to give us uh, 256 over 15 pi. Don't forget the pi. And because this is volume, we will also go ahead and say units cubed for this one as well. All right, so a couple of things to remember. You're going to use the disk method if your region is in contact with the axis over the entire interval from A to B, okay? So here, if you look at this, um, if I'm revolving about the y-axis and I look at my interval from here to here, then my region is in contact with the axis of revolution the entire time, from here all the way up to here. It's always touching the axis of revolution. If I change it and I revolve about the x-axis, now my area is above A to B here, and it is not always in contact with the x-axis on this interval. So because this is not in contact with the axis of revolution over the entire interval, if we want to do disk method revolving around the x-axis, we will need a different method to do that because there's going to be some empty space in the middle when we revolve about the x-axis. And that leads you to the washer method, which is our next video up in this series. So take a look at that. Good luck with your disk method.